NASCAR fans, we like to look back in time and reminisce about the drivers. No, the heroes that we either grew up with or watched in our pastime. We look back at drivers like Gordon, Earnhardt, and Petty fondly. Same goes for popular drivers like Kane, Jr., and Edwards. But what about the drivers that didn't get a chance to play out their careers? That's what I wonder about from time to time. And each time, I always think about Steve Park. He always comes to my mind. Park is one of the biggest what-if drivers that I ever think has been in NASCAR. Park actually started out his racing career in a pretty unorthodox way. The modified series of NASCAR. He didn't just work his way up through the late models. He went straight into modified tour racing with some really, really good competition. And from 1988 to 1996, Park became a force in the modified tour, scoring 16 wins, 56 top fives, 86 top tens, all in 174 starts. At his peak, he also finished second in points in both 95 and 96. This 96 success, along with a fourth place run at New Hampshire in the truck series, would get him his absolute best break in his career, a chance to drive for the Intimidator. Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt would call Park, and funnily enough, Park actually thought that it was a prank from his friends. He could not believe that Dale Earnhardt actually wanted to call him. He left a message on my answer machine, and uh, I just uh, kind of erased it. Thought it was friends of mine kidding around. There was a message like, uh, how come you don't call me back? i am called you twice now, you know, and I said, oh my God, that's Dale Earnhardt. When I first moved down here, I actually lived at Dale's house. Well, I couldn't sleep the first couple nights because I'd lay in bed and I'm thinking, well, I'm in the Intimidator's house and uh, he's just like right upstairs and I was just kind of petrified about that a little bit. Long story short though, he did pick up the phone and he got to drive the DEI 3 car in the Bush series and he piloted it to three victories and a third place point finish. With mentoring from his seven-time Winston Cup Series winning boss, it seemed that 1998 was the time for him to make the jump and DEI to jump to Cup in the number one Pennzoil Chevy. Optimism was at a premium not only for his rookie season, but also for his career. But that quickly would be quelled. His first two races were DNFs. He DNQ'd the next week at Vegas, and then disaster. year punctured a tire it's in the car hard into the wall and i ended up with a broken leg fractured clavicle just numerous injuries he is crash derailed his rookie season a broken femur caused him to miss 16 winston cup races and by the time he was finishing those final 15 races of the year it was clear that he still was not close to 100 percent 1999 would basically be his unofficial rookie campaign and it started quite poorly. It took 14 races that season for him to get his first top 10, a sixth at Michigan. After two DNFs at the halfway point of the season, he sat 30th in the point standings. And then a switch flipped. In the final 17 races of the year, he only had one finish outside the top 20. He also had 14 races where he finished between 9th and 19th. It was enough to gain him 16 spots in the points and finish him up 14th in the standings. With this, 2000 looked to be the breakout season. He once again had a slow start, sitting 20th in the standings after Richmond in May. But he turned it on earlier in the 2000 season than he did in 99, and it led to his first career win. It is headed toward his first NASCAR Winston Cup victory, but let's not give it to him yet. Well, Mark Martin, we saw the last couple laps. He has some good power in that number six car. He might be able to get in the inner loop a little bit harder than Park. Can he? Doesn't look like it. Can you imagine what's going through Steve Park's mind right now? He has a good entry and exit from the inner loop. Mark Martin remains a couple of car lengths behind. He's got this long sweeper here. Turn nine, a straightaway, and two more, and then the checkered flag. 
Boy, both of those drivers just absolutely driving their heart out. I'm telling you, want to get everything they possibly have in their body, trying to get to the victory lane. Through turn number 10. One more to go. And Steve Park is going to do it. Steve Park is going to win the Global Crossing at the Glen, his first NASCAR Winston Cup victory in his 77th race. This also led to him charging up to 11th in points after four more top fives and eight more top tens in the last 13 races. 2001 looked to be even better as DEI was jumping up even more. Park would be the leading veteran with guidance from Earnhardt. Unfortunately, tragedy would change all of it. I'm Winston Cup champion and former Daytona 500 winner Dale Earnhardt has died from a crash suffered in Sunday's Daytona 500. The accident occurred on the final lap of Sunday's race. The tragic news came Sunday night, two hours after the race ended, from NASCAR president Mike Helton. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident in turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. Out of this tragedy came Park's crowning achievement in his career. Park trying for his second Winston Cup win. Got to run. He's got to run. Bobby he's he's got to run down the inside. Park blocks him a little bit. Couldn't block him. All right, Bobby, he's off early. He's off early. He's going to gas it hard, and here they're going to come to the line. It's going to be a photo finish. Park has the run off the high side. He clears the body, and Steve Park scores the second straight win for Earnhardt Incorporated and the second win of his career. A wave to the crowd. Jumps on the roof. High flies all around. Oh, he dies. He dies. It's a mosh pit. Through. It's a mosh pit. Steve, Steve, have you ever tried harder to win a race than today? Oh, man, I, I brought tears to my eyes. Oh. Oh. I don't know what to say. Just uh, want to thank Teresa. You know, Dale's the one who taught me how to drive this place, and he told me to stay off the brakes, and we stayed off the brakes all day long and won the race. So, uh, you know, God bless the whole family. Thank God for this. He's been with us all weekend. This started a great opening run in the season that saw him peak to fourth in the points. Now, by the 20th race of the season at Pocono, he had fallen, though, to as low as 13th in the standings. But this looked to be the beginning of a comeback as Park scored four straight top 10s. By the time the 2001 Southern 500 weekend had come up, Park was back in the top 10 in points. This, unfortunately in hindsight, would be a bittersweet moment. You're going to see the purple car come into the pictures. There's Foyt trying to get his way up to the front of the pack. Oh, oh Park the? got hit. Oh, man. Who's the yellow car behind Park? Bad timing. Look at this. Is that Dan Partis? Looks like no, no, he Park just, just spun. He just, he just lost it. Either something obviously had to break on that car or, or something for the car to turn left that hard. He didn't just lose it at that speed. Oh, that's crazy. It's almost like an axle was broke or something for the car to turn like that. Oh, yeah. Once again, Park had to start all over from scratch, this time from a major brain injury. And it proved to be too much. He missed the first four races of 2002 as well as the end of 2001. And in 2002, he ran horribly when he returned. His season highlight literally was a flip. Uh -oh, oh, trouble! Steve Park is off into the infield. Another car ball over on his lid. It's Park and Dale Jr. Terrible crash. Man, Steve Park's car just turned dead left when he came off turn two. Jr. is running to see his teammate see if he's okay. And getting off into that wet grass wasn't going to do anything to slow those cars down. Well, There's Steve coming out of there. There he is. How we go. Good sign. That's what we wanted to see. Anyways, it, what happens is you slide up the racetrack and you can hit somebody in their left rear as you slide up the racetrack with your right front. And that's almost what it looked like that one car just turned dead sideways.
2003 only got worse. After 11 races, Park was 33rd in points. Made even worse about this was that at the time, his teammates were both in the top seven. Michael Waltrip sat 7th in points. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was 2nd in points, 20 points out of the lead, a championship contender. Park was basically traded to RCR, where he would drive for the rest of the year. After 2003, he retired from full-time Cup Series driving. So how good was Steve Park? Well, we'll never actually know for sure. But I think that he was a driver that could have been on the same level as a Greg Biffle or a Casey Kane. Talented, but not quite a title contender on a yearly basis. From 1999 to 2001, you could see a real progression in his career. And I think that barring injury, he would have made a great career for himself and gotten anywhere from 10 to 20 victories in his career. DEI was not a great team, but he made the most of it. And at his peak in his career, he ran about the same as Dale Jr. did at the same time. So he had some talent. At the end of the day, Park deserves more remembrance and respect as a Cup Series driver than I think he gets. He is one of NASCAR's biggest what-ifs ever. But now, I want to pass it on to you. How good do you think Steve Park was? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, have a good one.